Hey everyone, it's Ivan with Kitbadger.com here today to bring you part nine in my factory to table series, wrapping up with the mini fix. This series has absolutely been an adventure. Started off back in New Hampshire, part one, going and building this mini fix, kind of first one out in the wild. After that, there also, I ended up welding up my very own trash panda silencer with them. Then I ended up going up north to David, David Stark, Discrete Ballistics. Ended up loading up some Cellos 188 grain, solid copper expanding subsonic 300 blackout. From there, went over to Coltac, ended up sewing up my silencer cover. After that, headed down, met up with my buddy Edgar, Edgar Sherman Design, sewed up my sling, went, met up with Phil in PA, ended up assembling my Scalarworks Leap mount. And then part seven, I ended up taking this thing out, number of times shooting. Part eight, took it out on a number of hunts and full circle, here we are, part nine, kind of, kind of wrapping up with my takeaways from this gun and my experience with it. Before I dive into the mini fix, quick little rundown on some of the other pieces that came along the way. I will say real quick to the Trash Panda, I've been totally spoiled with Q silencers as far as just the way they mount up. They make it so easy and don't let any gas go back. You can always get them off or put them on with your hands, no tools, anything crazy like that. I definitely appreciate that. Having used the Thunder Chicken and the Trash Panda, I will say if there is a need to go shorter and lighter, this is definitely the one. Sound suppression, Thunder Chicken, just more volume. Coltac does an amazing job with suppressor covers. I will say this was used grossly beyond what it was designed for. I ended up using this on a 5.56 on my Sugar Weasel. I was competing down in, I think it was South Carolina. Only reason I was running a silencer is because 2019, the rules were very loosely enforced. And so I was trying to follow the rules. Had a silencer on there, had this cover on there, hoping not to burn myself. And one of the stages was like 80 round spindex. It was ridiculous. And yes, 80 rounds of 5.56 will get that screaming hot. It melted it. Will it usually do that? No, it won't. There's another insert in here that uh, goes over the actual can and then this wrap goes over for super high temps. When I went and sewed this up, specifically did not get that because I was shooting a bolt action pistol, largely with subsonic 300 blackout, which doesn't get crazy hot. That was totally bad on me. As far as this sling, Thing's been awesome. I've used them before. Recently, Edgar ended up making his own pull tabs. I think I like them more than the little orbit zip or whatever it was that used to be on here, but they're great, super lightweight. I do appreciate, especially with this platform, being able to attach it with paracord there as well as back here. This doesn't necessarily lend itself to a bunch of sling attachment points. And yeah, the Edgar Sherman design slings go great with paracord, especially cell loops the way I did mine. So yeah, this thing definitely has turned out well for me. The Scalarworks Leap Mount, thing's been incredible. It does a really good job, in my experience, retaining zero, taking it on and off, in part using this optic on other weapons. And the self-leveling feature that is built into this, pretty much worth the price of admission. I really like shooting. I don't really like leveling optics. This thing's pretty rad. And while I didn't go build this optic, I've definitely put in a lot of time with it. And as I'll speak to you when I get into the actual mini fix, one thing that I think is important, depending on how you're gonna use it, i.e. supers, subs, or honestly, either of those is 
having some sort of optic that actually has drops. Doesn't need to be 300 blackout drops, but whether it's mills, MOA, something that you can actually reference, I think is definitely important. And this does that. And yeah, I find the uh, reticle to be pretty conducive to shooting 300 blackout. And lastly, the Celos Discrete Ballistics 188 grain subsonic expanders. I had a tough time with them. And I don't think it was totally on them because honestly, I've seen their terminal performance from a lot of different things and they consistently expand out and create pretty wicked wound channels. I will say I had one skip off the head of a boar, which was a bummer. And yeah, like I, I don't know, like I just had bad luck. I think they're really good rounds made to definitely a high standard. I guess it comes down to use case though. Do you need subsonic expanding 300 blackout? Honestly, I think the best use case for any subsonic expanding blackout is probably the original application, shooting unarmored people indoors, close ranges. Like that's what it was built for. Outside of that, a lot of people try to adopt it to a lot of different things and it can absolutely been used or be used in those situations. Honestly, best use case for this is places where you need to be suppressed. Like a lot of uh, like fish and wildlife, like they need subsonic rounds because whether they're in or outside of like neighborhoods, housing developments and stuff, they're not gonna go blasting like unsuppressed supersonic. So they have it, I wanna say it's like written into doctrine and stuff like that. There are places that you have to use subsonic. Perfect use case. Was it perfect for my use case? I don't know. I got what I got and I think largely, I kinda had a, kinda had a run of bad luck. Which brings us to the mini fix. I get occasionally the comment where it's just like, why? Why would someone want a bolt action 300 blackout pistol? Because it's rad. No, if we're talking honest use case, well, first of all, there are different places where you can't carry a rifle. You can either legally carry to hunt or whatever it may be, a pistol, but not a rifle. There are also places where you cannot hunt with a semi-automatic, be it pistol or rifle. So now we have a bolt action. And if we're jumping down the hole of, well, why would you own that gun? Most people probably own guns they have no business owning. Like you're probably not gonna use your little Mark 18 clone for what it was originally intended. You probably won't but maybe it's a rad gun to you. And to that end, this thing's about as rad as it gets. I definitely have never seen anything like it. Since seeing the original prototype when I actually visited Q my first time and getting to check out the fix and then this, it's incredible. Like the amount of engineering and stuff that's gone into this to include the Q-cert, the reason behind all of the different parts and pieces, the bolt throw, that alone. I've shot a bunch of really nice, really expensive name brand custom bolt actions. All day long better. Sorry, man. It's on rails all day long. Thing is incredible. This is just, it's a ton of fun to shoot at the end of the day. And as far as hunting goes, do I want a 20 pound boat anchor with like a 26 inch barrel getting caught on everything as I'm hiking through the woods? I don't. This thing is amazing. When you go hunting, you usually do a lot more walking than you do shooting. And to that end, whether I've carried this thing in my pack before, especially without the silencer on there, this thing's incredibly small, or even with this brace folded out, having this thing just slung, it's small, it's light, it's compact. 
And that right there is amazing unto itself. If you don't get it, you've probably never walked miles in the backcountry, cutting through brush and dense forest, because that right there is really amazing in application. As far as accuracy goes with this, I'm actually really pleased with it. This thing does good with supers and subs. Eight inch, 300 blackout, one in five twist. Does a great job stabilizing those heavy bullets. And yeah, do I want it to be a quarter room away gun? That'd be cool, I guess. But truth be told, if this was a quarter room away gun, doesn't matter because I'm fairly certain I'm not a quarter room away shooter. And as far as all those groups I got in part eight or part seven rather, someone that's a better shooter behind this could probably do a better job. I will say of all the different guns that I've shot in, this may well probably has the best trigger of any of it. There's that right there. And then it's very distinct and it's super clean. Honestly, that trigger right there and to cock it, it's just that right there. But that trigger, there's the wall. Oh, there's the wall. Super, super clean. I will say that alone is incredible. And if you're unfamiliar with this platform, even if you basically have fired this, you can actually still manipulate safety, which is kind of handy. So who do I think this gun is good for? Honestly, anyone who wants it. This gun, it's just rad. It's a ton of fun to shoot. I enjoy shooting it. My boys like shooting it. As far as what is it best for? Well, if you are somewhere densely wooded, gonna make not very far shots, like not past like 200 yards or something, and are probably gonna spend a lot more time hiking than shooting, I would probably look hard at something like this because small, lightweight package, capable, pretty rad gun. You can find out this and all the other stuff over on Q's website. And if you end up picking one up, let me know how it does for you. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.